The Immortal John Hancock here and this is a quick video. Uh, I just kind of want to talk today about how collecting game systems uh, we get sometimes wrapped up into uh, determining whether or not a console is good or not depending on sales and I kind of want to talk today and say that a console sales doesn't make a console great and um, a good example here is a Vetrex and so uh, recently, um, I got very lucky and scored some amazing Vetrex stuff, and a lot of this stuff, some of this stuff is going to be some box upgrades for me and for my collection, uh, more like internal stuff too. But uh, the Vetrex, for many that don't know, is the only vector-based uh, console, and it, it, it came in a small black and white monitor with an encased shell. Uh, with a very unique controller. I've done a video a long time ago about it. I need to do a better video. But the console was a total dismal failure. And yet, for many serious collectors out there, the Vetrex is a prized, a prized thing, especially one in box. Uh, box games, really hard to get. But the reason why people remember the Vetrex is because A, it was a unique experience. It had some really good games. One of my favorite is uh, Star Castle. And um, they had these overlays because it was a black and white system. You'd put over the over the black and white monitor here <laughs> to mimic uh, color, and it was just really neat. And so that con this this did not sell well at all. And so um, people still collect it. People still love to talk about it because the games were good. And so when we when you're collecting system or you're a fan of the system, you know, that does, sales don't matter. And so sometimes we get really caught up in the, like whether or not to collect a system because, oh, it didn't sell well or it's not popular. Well, sometimes those are the greatest systems to collect because, you know, they have a unique experience. They try to be different. You know, I think about the Wii U a little bit uh, for more modern consoles, you know. Uh, I still think it's too expensive to pick up right now, but you know, with the holidays coming up, uh, it, it's going to drop in price, and there's enough good games there to to pick up to pick up when the when the price drops, and so uh, it's it's kind of comparing apples and oranges, but you know this this is an example of a of a console that hardly had any games but it had enough games and a unique experience that it's worthy of picking up um, there's several other consoles out there I think of the Dreamcast Sega Dreamcast is uh, it's pretty popular with collectors it didn't sell well at all either and yet it's remembered uh, vividly and fondly especially from Sega fans so you know one thing when you're collecting games is sometimes failed consoles which I would consider the Vetrex a failed console are are nice to have in a collection. Now, the other thing to ramble on about is that when I pick up a console or a portable system, whatever you collect, uh, I typically, if when I, especially nowadays with with collecting being more expensive, I have what's called the rule of three, and the rule of three goes as follows. Uh, the rule of three is that. Um, when you're collecting a, a game console, and and you're and you're and you're investing some money into it, you know, sometimes especially now co consoles are are more expensive, even even retro collecting. The rule of three goes as follows: if there's not three games that you're gonna play at any time, then you may want to reconsider picking up a console. And so, uh, I think of all the great systems out there: Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Nintendo, Atari. Um, all, all of these consoles have multiple games that are worthy of playing. And so when you're, when you're retro collecting, and you need to ask yourself the rule of three. Um, is there three titles that I'm, that I'm going to be playing on this console? You know, why am I picking this up? Now for some people, you know, it's, it's because they always had, always wanted to have one or, or they didn't have one growing up, but. You know, one nice thing about, uh, there's a large upcoming video game convention, Portland Retro Gaming Expo, and they're going to have a huge free play area where people can experience and play 
games. You may not have be near a convention, so you know there's other options for you. But um, I recommend people to play a console before they pick it up because you might hear something about a console, play it, and be like, "Oh, I'm I was wrong about that." So that's what I recommend. Um, comment below. Uh, I would like to know from my fans and viewers. What are your favorite failed consoles that you like to collect? And um, and what are the games on them that you are your favorite? And so for me, it's definitely for Vetrex, Star Castle. Star Castle is an amazing game. Um, it, it ported well to the Vetrex. Um, I've been a huge fan of the Vetrex for a long time. And... Uh, I, I, I owe uh, Digipress back in the day forums uh, getting to know about that and got to experience one in person finally uh, at, at a classic gaming expo probably mid 2000s and after I experienced that in, that in person I was a fan because I finally got to play one and so um, that's what's really neat about uh, you know unique consoles such as the Vetrex is I don't think there'll ever be a system like it and and uh yeah so the rule of three uh what are your rules for collecting consoles uh do they have to have good games for you to pick them up or, or what specific games do you uh do you like on on consoles that that weren't successful whatsoever anyways uh comment below subscribe and like um again uh, these seem to be some some basic videos uh for the time being i'm getting ready for the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I got some great announcements next week for my channel. And uh, thank you so much for watching. This is the Immortal John Hancock signing out.